video is going to be about hot water and how I do it. Um, using the solar, photovoltaics, uh, generator, geothermal, things like that. And um, hope this helps. So generally, as a rule of thumb, um, heating water with a uh, photovoltaic system is uh, sort of overlooked and a lot of people don't do it unless they have a really large system. And in this case, I do it in uh, several different ways. And uh, I've had a lot of questions about these charge controllers and the reason I use them is because they're also load controllers. And I'm actually using them in the load controller configuration and uh, I'll try to show you a diagram of that. So this is basically how I'm wired, um, except for they're not showing an inverter in here. Um, basically, I, instead of just having a charge controller, it's uh, actually uh, a load controller. And uh, hopefully that helps, and hopefully you can see that and read that. Now with things like wind turbines and hydro, you always have to have a diversion load. This is an air diversion load uh, for the wind turbine that I'm currently not using. And um, the excess solar, when I'm not tied to the grid, uh, I uh, put it in my water heater. Because if uh, the grid is out, then uh, my geothermal's out, so I'm not heating water that way. Alright, so i got three sources of uh, heating water here. Um, I have my on-grid, or generator power, and uh, I've got that uh, disconnect pulled out because I'm heating with geothermal right now while I'm on the grid. And... Um, the upper element is uh, the 110 element, or the 220 element, I'm sorry, and the lower one is a DC element uh, sized to my solar system. So the main way I heat my water is with the geothermal heat pump, and I do have a dedicated video to that, and uh, you just need to go to my channel and look for it. But basically it takes the heat off the compressor and the hot line and uh, circulates it through the water heater, which of those insulated lines going back there, and uh, it does all my water heating when uh, I'm on grid. So this is my 8KW, or I'm sorry, 8.5KW whole house generator, runs off of a well spits the exhaust out with water in it, very safe, uh, diesel, very uh, stable, and um, this is uh, one option for heat and water because I can do it electrically or I can uh, run the geothermal heat pump if I need hot water, cold water. I also got these uh, attachments down below. I can run an air heater or a water heater off those, but that would be another video in itself. But uh, let me go into the nuts and bolts of how this works, or try anyway. So now I guess for the nuts and bolts for the whole thing, um, I've had a lot of people ask me why I'm not using the uh, modern day MPPT charge controllers. And uh, the reason is because I wanted to use load controllers to be able to heat water and stuff like that. Not that I ever do it while I'm on the grid. Of course, if the power gives out, then uh, it's a great way to use your excess power. Because what happens with any charge controller, when uh, they charge the batteries up, they just start to bleed off the uh, voltage and amperage, and it's just wasted. Where if you can send it into a water heater element, um, it's sort of the way to go. So I got 1200 watts coming into each one of these charge controllers and all they're doing is feeding it right through. It's all being grid tied. So they don't even have to be here uh, with an on grid situation. It's just selling it right back to the grid. Now if the power to go out for any length of time or whatever, what they'll do instead of just bleeding off the excess power, they're going to feed it to the water heater and uh, heat the water. So the reason I have four charge controllers 
is because I'm I'm staying with low voltages. Um, an MPPT charge controller can deal with super high voltages coming out of your array and uh, transform it down to really charge your batteries properly. Where these here, uh, just because of the capacity I have, I have to uh, stick with uh, traditional charge controllers and they can disagree with each other and things like that but they also require uh, very large wire sizes. Now I'm not sure I explained this right. Um, what this inverter does is it's going to take all of the solar and it's going to maintain the batteries to a, uh, a float voltage and uh, make sure that they're at their optimum voltage and, and charge or state of charge and it's going to take the rest and just sell it, you know, just sell it right back to the grid. Or if the power to go out, um, whatever AC loads I'm using may get satisfied and then I'm going to have extra solar and there's nothing to do with it. And what the uh, load controllers do with the water heater is it just uh, puts it in the water heater instead of wasting it. So back in the day when I first started doing this, I started off with a uh, 600 watt element and this is a 12 volt one and uh, then when I converted to a 12 volt system with a hybrid grid tie inverter um, I stepped up to a much larger one and there's something similar to this in the water heater and it's actually a uh, 1800 watt uh, element even though I'm capable of putting out 2400 watts it's still very dependable and very capable of dealing with loads the main thing when you switch your solar, wind, hydro over to a, uh, a diversion load or a load controller is you want a super dependable load. You don't want to do light bulbs, anything like that. You want to do heating elements, things like that. And I think you might have been able to read that on that page. But uh, basically the way this works is these charge controllers do absolutely nothing when we're grid tied. They put out everything they can. This inverter takes care of the charging and feeds all excess power back to the grid. Now I get tons and tons of questions on um, a lot of PMs actually and, and a lot of them on my videos about uh, you know how much do I need to do this and do that and, and uh, man I, I really wish I could answer it for you. It's all online just do some research it's not necessarily on YouTube but it's online and um, I'm just trying to share information here. I, it was live and learn for me too. I mean, I started out one way and then I figured out that I didn't want any of the uh, super cheap components because I didn't want my house to burn down while I was at work. So the, for, for the most part, um, photovoltaics is generally not the way to heat water. Um, it's uh, inefficient and pretty much not the way to do it. Uh, passive solar, that's another thing to look into. I just happen to have it set up this way. And uh, if I were to have to go off grid, this is just one of the ways it would work. So my main heating source year round uh, with the grid on is the uh, geothermal. Then when it's uh, super mild and uh, the heat nor the AC is running, um, I rely on the uh, regular grid. Then if the power was out for an extended period of time, uh, I can maintain hot water with the uh, solar. Or if I don't use to, too much of it, um, I can actually get that tank hot off of solar alone. Then the last option is to uh, burn on my resources by running the generator. But it's all part of it. Now remember, passive solar way outdoes photovoltaics for heating water. It just happens to be way the way I have this system set up. I'm geothermal and uh, then I back up from there. Well anyway I hope this was helpful. Um, I have a hard time answering all the questions because they're uh, a little too technical to do online. I think I'm better at trying to do them on videos and even then I think I do a really crappy job to be honest with you.